This is Sports Center. On this edition of NHS Beyond Sports Center, we're in the meat of the schedule for both the boys and the girls, as the girls played four quality teams in a row as they took on Lamore, Carrington, Park River, and Rugby in 12 days. The boys also played a couple of top 10 teams as they went to Carrington and then hosted undefeated St. John. Six tough games and five quality wins for the Bearcats. We've got all the highlights coming up next on NHSPN Sports Center. Right now. Hi, and welcome to NHSPN Sports Center. I'm Macy Quilvang along with Peyton Halverson. We'll be covering the Bearcat boys basketball team. The boys started out their season with six straight wins, but consecutive losses to number one four wins and unranked rugby knocked them out of the top 10. Then they ran off four straight wins before heading to Carrington, who had lost their first game of the season earlier in the week when they fell to four wins. They were ranked at number five and the Bearcats were receiving votes in the January 23rd poll. Kamrowski grabs the board and finds the wide open Tayden Thomas for the easy layup. The Bearcats work the ball around and then Kamrowski uses Dugdale's screen for the open shot. Again, Kamrowski uses a screen and Heisler finds Dugdale on the wraparound pass for the layup. Kamrowski drives and gets the ball to Thomas, who finds Heisler for the open three late in the third quarter. Andrew Oakland has no one within 10 feet of him as he puts in the easy two. Kamrowski uses the double screen as he hits the fadeaway jumper with one second left on the shot clock. Northstar's great passing on this play allows Thomas to find himself open under the basket for the score. After being tied at 13 at the end of the first quarter, the Bearcats outscored the cards in each of the final three quarters to end up with a convincing 18-point win. Carrington couldn't buy a bucket in close, as they were only 8 out of 38 on two-point attempts. After two easy wins against Dunseeth and Roulette Wolford, the boys faced the last unbeaten team in Class B boys basketball, the St. John Woodchucks. Norster had moved up to number 10 in the polls, and the Chucks were number 3. But St. John had played a very easy schedule. The Bearcats would be their first opponent of the season that had ever received votes in the polls. That gave many Bearcat fans a hope that maybe St. John was overrated. Alas, that was not the case. Early in the game, Kramrowski finds Heisler as he hits the fadeaway baseline shot. Borsted passes it to Oakland, who finds Legacy open under the basket for an easy two-pointer. The defender would not honor Oakland's shooting ability, so he makes them pay with this three-pointer. Jaden had a season-high 30 points this night, a lot of which came on plays like this as he shoots the deep three and swishes it. With St. John pressing, Heisler beats the press and finds himself gliding in for the left-handed layup. Jaden looks over the defense, then uses Dugdale's screen for one of his six threes on the night. Northstar couldn't overcome St. John's torrid three-point shooting in the first half. St. John won the battle of the first three quarters by outscoring the Bearcats by at least five in each of those quarters. The Bearcats scored 23 in the final quarter, but the game was well out of reach by then. Hi, I'm Johnny Heisler. Derek Lindseth and I will take you through the second half of the show as we cover the girls team. The Lady Bearcats had seldom defeated 14 straight opponents to start off the season, including a couple of top 10 teams in Langdon and Bishop Ryan. But in the second half of January, they were facing four straight games against teams either in the top 10 or receiving votes. The first matchup was against the Lamore Litchville Marion Lobos, a school known more for its outstanding volleyball team, but certainly a tough opponent on the basketball floor as well. Stephanie Miller enters the ball into a posting up Quilvang who makes a strong finish. On an inbound, Miller passes it into Borsted who finds her open for a three-pointer. The Lobo defender goes diving for the ball, but Quilvang takes a dribble for the pull-up jumper. The Bearcats perform a give-and-go with Miller and Quilvang. Miller makes the two-point basket. 
Quivo makes a tricky pass out to Borsted, who converts the jumper. Maya Halveson finds her sister Peyton, who cashes the three-point shot. The Bearcats are quick getting it down the floor, resulting in a fast break layup. To end the game, Peyton Halverson extends the 20-point lead to 23. Lemoyne never managed to score in double figures in any quarter, and their 27 points was tied for the lowest point total of the season. One week later, the girls traveled to Carrington as part of a doubleheader. Carrington was undefeated and ranked number four. They were to prove to be the toughest opponent the Bearcats had faced all year. Quilvang sets a high pick for Miller, who steps back for a three-pointer. Miller passes a high lob to Quilvang, who finishes for two of her 20 points on the night. With time on the shot clock winding down, Quilvang shoots the ball with four seconds left. Peyton gets the offensive rebound twice and finishes the left-handed layup on her second attempt. Quilvang sends a high-low pass to Maya, who makes the shot over the Cardinal defender. Peyton finds Macy on a hard seal on the post. Quilvang finishes strong on the right side. Miller and Halverson play a little catch beyond the arc and Miller gets the open look. Miller passes it to Quilvang, who makes the basket over a double team. Halverson dribbles hard to the right and finds Stephanie Miller to give the Bearcats the lead. Quilvang gets the ball in the post and turns around near the block and puts it in. The four point margin of victory was by far the closest game the Bearcats had played. No other team had come closer than 16. But when the Bearcats found themselves down by eight in the third quarter, they were able to mount a comeback at the end of the third quarter and through the fourth quarter to squeak out the win. After that tough game against Carrington, the Bearcats had to be ready to take on the number two team in the state, the Park River Aggies. Both teams had only Sunday to prepare for this big matchup. North Star beat Park River twice last year, including a one-point win in the state consolation game. The Aggies were sure to be looking for some payback. Halverson cuts back door and Miller throws it to her for a right-handed layup. Miller throws a lob into Quilvang at post. Quilvang makes a spin move to the basket. Steph dribbles right and sees Maya Halverson left open on top to sink an 18-footer. Peyton Halverson tips the ball away for a steal, and she chases the ball down, making a left-handed layup. Halverson gets the ball at the wing, and Quilvang dives down low, finishing the play with an and one. Miller hits Borsed open on top, and she nails the deep two with the shot clock running down. Borsed sees Quilvang posting up. She drop steps around the defense and puts up the right-handed layup. Miller gets double teamed, driving left, and finds Madison Borsed open on the right for the layup. Corvo makes a difficult catch and passes the give and go back to Miller to get the basket. Missy gets triple teamed at the post and she finds Peyton cutting back door behind the defense. Borsted takes a hard dribble left and spots Stephanie Miller cutting in for the and one basket. The Aggies kept within striking distance for most of the game, but never threatened to take the lead. The Bearcats led by six at the end of the third, but outscored Park River by eight in the final quarter for the 14 point win. This was the second closest game the Bearcats had played, but you would expect that when playing the number two team in the state. That left one top ten foe left to defeat, the number ten ranked Rugby Panthers, who had dropped down from number seven the previous week after a loss to Velva Sawyer. But the Panthers came in with a plan, a plan that shut down the North Star offense for the first half, by putting chasers on Stephen Macy and often double teaming them when they had the ball. The Panthers kept within striking distance until the other starters began hitting some outside shots in the second half. Maddie Borstead pushes the ball up the floor and finds Kelly Hushley who converts for the fast break layup. The Bearcats work the offense around. Macy Quilvang finds Maya Halverson wide open for the two point basket. Peyton Halverson passes it to Quilvang who makes a strong move to the basket for two. Halverson puts the Bearcats up by 11 in the third quarter from this three-point shot. Stephanie Miller averages 16 points a game. The Panthers had a chaser on her all night and held her to one field goal for the night. Maddie Borstead sinks this 19-footer to add two more to her total. Stephanie Miller sees an open Halverson beyond the arc. Peyton hits another three. 
Borstead dribbles to the baseline and passes it to Quovang, who finishes for another basket. After being ahead by only 6 at halftime and 9 at the end of the third quarter, the Bearcats got their offense in gear and outscored the Panthers 21-6 in the final stanza. For the first time this season, someone other than Macy or Stephanie led the team in scoring, as Peyton led the way with 16. The Bearcats finished up the regular season with an easy win over Botano, giving them a 19-0 season. Next up is the meaningless district tournament followed by the regions. The girls are the favorite to go to state, but Laning could give them some problems. The boys have three more games left before tournament play. With their loss to St. John, the Bearcats will be seated second in the district. A district championship would make for a much easier region tournament, as the winner of District 8 will not be in the same bracket as the likely winner of District 7, four wins. That's it for this show. Check back after the tournaments for our final show.